And now for something completely different. Ah! Forget everything you've been told by others before. Get ready for the real deal. The full story. Real talk about money, markets, life. Now, it's The Real Investment Show. Presented by RIA Advisors. Well, we're sort of the real deal, but we got a lot of filler. Yeah. We like the real deal with some fluff. It's all real. Yeah. What is real? What's real? Are we in the Matrix? Where are we? Ask Happy. Chat GP. Oh, yeah. We're stuck in the Chat GPT. I heard when they asked AI to do a Yoko Ono song, it brought itself up to a roof and jumped. It. I it does not compute. It does not compute. I am frying my my electrodes. I must jump. I must jump. That was actually the Yoko song that he came up with. Welcome to Financial Fitness Friday. I'm Rich Rosso, Danny Ratliff, Certified Financial Planner Squared, and Father's Day coming up. I'm afraid for the calendar, its days are numbered. Corny dad joke of the day. I'm sure Danny's going to get hit with a lot of dad jokes this weekend. Per usual. Per usual. Dad, you're such a joke. <laughs> well, the market's continuing its uptrend. Don't, we went from don't fight the Fed to don't fight the tape. So here we are. Up about nine points this morning. Right, so we have had the best week for global stocks in more than a couple of months. Right, so we've had maybe some Chinese stimulus and ex are of course AI. AI, the world in the MSCI World in Index climbed three percent this week. That's most since the end of March. So Danny, I every time I think the market goes up, Powell sits there and fumes. <laughs> what are y'all doing? We're going to have two more rate hikes. I absolutely believe that that will occur. And he does need to keep his stance that inflation isn't coming down as expected. And it's not. If you look at the Atlanta Fed sticky price CPI, it's curving down just a little bit. But there's still, as Mr. Powell says, a lot of work to do. What do you say? Well, I think he's got an interesting spot that he's in. I mean, you look at the Bank of China looking at potentially easing. Mm -hmm. yep. um, you have Bank of Japan keeping interest rates extremely low and still having you know very loose monetary policy. And so maybe he's getting a little bit of a window here. Market seems to take those things favorably. Um, but you know, you mentioned CPI is coming down, albeit it is just a slow, slow it is. moving train is the best way I can describe it. It is. To get from this level of close to 4% or higher down to 2 seems like it's going to be a task. He's going to have to and, cut it in half. I mean, put that in perspective. Right. And there's right. still a lot of money that's still in the economy that there it's is. going to take a long time to work its way out. And it's people are changing still, hands. Yeah, people are still spending, right? I mean, the and I mean, employment is pretty good. We still need people in the workforce. So, you know, it's it's an interesting dynamic across the board but uh, definitely this ai has ignited things the narrative is so strong and um the story is so strong that y you know you're getting wrapped up in this excitement so it's busting us out of this range this is one of the first times danny i've seen global banks not synchronized like all lowering rates at the same time all raising yeah. rates at the same time everybody is doing sort of their own thing. It's, I, I don't remember a time when that's occurred, but we are definitely in that stage. Well, like typically they're mentioned. dealing with the IMF. You're dealing with, you know, they're talking to each other regularly and they're on the same very cohesive page, but we're all at different stages. You think about mm -hmm. it, China's just really in earnest coming, you know, reopening after the pandemic, not, things aren't materializing quick enough for them, which is why they're actually going out and, and trying to loosen the reins, so to speak. Um, so, yeah, you've got everybody on different pages. Yeah. And how long can that continue for? Right. And, and what does that look like considering that we are in different stages of, you know, this post-pandemic kind of world? You know, you actually might get a chance where, uh, I'm going to create a new word, stocks desync. In other words, we might see where 
eventually international stocks do better than U.S. stocks. Or, you know, we might actually start to see some true diversification if this keeps up. At least that's my thought process. We'll see if that, um, what, if that plays out. But again, yeah, I, I mean, I never really give Mr. Powell much, much of a, uh, you know, nice smack well, on the back. But I do think it was smart for him to at least pause. hold strong. Or skip. Yeah, skip. But strong words. We're not done. Right? We got a long way to go. But let's do this wait and see, especially in the face of the banking crisis we've had. And who knows what else happens here down the road? Because obviously increasing rates are going to cause continued pressure. And we're going to, I think, to wait and see. But, to, you know, I think the market's anticipating, again, uh, one, a soft landing. Who knows? I still think the odds are not in that favor and that the fed will may not raise rates and i still think that they probably have at least one more rate hike in them this year we'll see yeah if not those two you just mentioned but eurozone's officially in, been in a recession now right. Right? Um, right so you have that decoupling of potentially equities in different regions which you know that's where i think you're going to find that those opportunities and Absolutely. even here there's still a lot of opportunities because market breadth has been so poor you will see some type of sector rotation at some point it's but, gotten better yeah. but to your point it's still not what it should but at least i've started to see you're starting to see a a healthier participation among the sectors where it's it was really terrible i've been telling people it's almost like you're it's like everybody's in one building and everything around it is in in turmoil and and and, and busted up like it is this shining building on a hill is all this tech and ai and it like you said it's still that way but it seems like there are some people exiting that building and expanding their horizons and i think that that's that's a good Sign. But Rich, you just mentioned the consumer. How much longer I, can this go on without additional stimulus? At what point listen, do you I see don't them? Know. I mean, it's, it, I think it all stems back to being locked up for two years, and there's been some emotional switch in everybody's head. Yeah, but but capital accessibility to it is going to be diminishing I, as I, the banks continue to get stricter lending yep. policies, as credit card balances continue to increase, savings decline. I mean, you just follow the bouncing ball. It doesn't. It doesn't look but here's great. Here's Danny. You know how it is. As long as people have a job, as long as you have a job and you feel your job is secure, you know, people, I mean, generally speaking, you and I do. Yeah. People listen to this show probably do. But for the most part, people go, hey, my job is secure, so who cares? You know, mm. let's, let's, let's just party. Yeah. So, but there's going to be a point when that unemployment ticks up and things slow down from that perspective, I think reality is going to hit. But I do think you're going to have to see more layoffs for that reality to kick in. But and why are we I not seeing that in forward guidance? We're not seeing that in, in I, earnings I, expectations. I know. I mean, it's, it's just not there. It's weird. Listen, but you can't fight the tape. Yeah, Listen, it is what it is, right? You got to understand there's participation in the markets, and it's okay for you to do that. But, you know, understand that you may say the market's wrong, 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 wrong. That's just going to get you nothing. You, you have to look at the tape. Take advantage of it, but have an exit strategy. We get back, we're going to talk about cash is king again. Well, for one generation in particular, when we return. Stay tuned. Investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. Oh, Red, I declare, I plum missed that candy coffee. Whatever am I gonna do? Don't you worry, little darling. We'll watch it again on our YouTube channel. Why, Red? I never! The Real Investment Show YouTube channel has all of our past presentations from Candid Coffee and Lunch and Learn to special topic discussions and all of our live show recordings preserved for you. Subscribe now to the Real Investment Show YouTube channel or look for the link on our website at realinvestmentadvice.com. 
Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA Advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. Get started right now at the website, realinvestmentadvice.com, or simply call our toll-free number, 855-RIA-PLAN, or again, simply online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset, your people. realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Bulls win in bull markets. Bears win in bear markets. Eagles soar above and take advantage of opportunity. Let us help you soar as you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. Welcome to Dad Joke Friday. What did the skeleton say to the bartender when he walked into the bar, Dan? No idea. I'll have one beer and a mop. Brent's like, okay, listen, cut the dad jokes. That's terrible. But dad jokes are supposed to be. We're going to need somebody to preview these first. (laughs) Frankly, I don't think they get any better. Just don't. What does seem to be getting better, there's a study that was commissioned by Credit Karma and conducted by Harris that said, said, hey, what's your consumers doing with cash? And that cash usage is highest among Gen Z. 69% of the demographic group using more cash than they did a year ago. So 47% of Gen X, um, baby boomers 37%. So they really like cash so what they're doing is they're keeping themselves accountable and budgeting their money and Danny I know we've talked about this on the show before but I meet with a lot of Gen Z's and talk to a lot of them they seem to be much better at embracing budgets and cash also they don't want a digital trace they're actually paranoid. You have a lot of uh, Gen Zs that are not even on social media. They don't like it. So they are actually don't like that. They like that feeling of free money. Now, Credit Karma says it actually could lead to excessive spending. Um, I actually think that it's a good thing that Gen Z is looking at cash. You know, maybe they're looking there. Maybe they're using the Dave Ramsey envelope system, right? And if they're but and if they're using the B word and they're embracing budgeting, I know my daughter who's a Gen Z actually keeps a budget, um, and I see more of her friends do that. Um, I I I don't see anything wrong with this. I mean, I understand it. Do you want to maybe use credit and, and so forth? But I can overspend much easier on credit than I can on cash. Credit Karma thinks different. Well, I think that when you start saving, it, it feels good, right? And it's very difficult to part with cash once you have cash on hand for many people. Yeah. But just like we talk about, you know, it's kind of like uh, a credit card is a gateway drug to, to credit. Once people start spending on credit and you maybe go outside of your rules, mm-hmm. I think it gets a lot easier to do so, right? Oh, it well, it's just this one time. Wait, we'll do it. Okay, the next thing you know, you do it again. You do it again. And that can be more problematic, I think, than having savings and having the accessibility to it to go spend those funds. I'm all for it. Yeah. I mean, because I I know I have a difficult time partying with funds. I think a lot of people do. I mean, we see it often. In fact, there's a lot of times we tell clients like, hey, you could probably spend a little bit more money in retirement. You're like, what? I don't want to spend any more money because they've worked hard. They know how hard they had to work to get those funds. 
versus on that credit, I think it's a lot easier to spend because it's not your money. Yeah, and it is. And I mean, and, and, and I understand the importance of building credit. And I counsel sometimes Gen Z that yeah. they will use their card. And then they're very conscious, I find, of paying it back. Better than millennials and Gen Xs that I tend to talk to and work with, it seems like, again, Gen Z has just got a better handle on the basics, although they are extreme on the secrecy side. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But to start off with cash and understanding where money goes and budgeting and then making sure that you have a healthy balance of using credit and paying off the bill uh, and building your credit score and being conscious of it and running your a credit your report annually um, is not a bad idea. Matter of fact, a lot of times to get off the credit or credit detox, sometimes we'll recommend people go to cash to pay for certain things because once it's gone, it's gone. So sometimes you're going to have to wean people off this. Like you said, it's if it's on a credit card, it's like no big deal. It disappears into into the heavens and I don't have to do anything about it until the bill hits. And even then I don't even probably get a bill. I, don't, I get a, I get a virtual statement and I don't really go through my statements. So I'm making the minimum payment. Yep. And um, so having cash for some expenses, I, I think is you're a good steward. I mean, especially if you're just starting out and that's how you're doing it. I think that's, you're laying the foundation for good money habits. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that using credit, properly is extremely important you know mm -hmm. one to build that credit but two if you can you know it's like I, I visit with a lot of people that use their debit card and they may have a lot of money in their account i'm like guys what are we doing like what do you mean like why would we be using our debit card because now if somebody they get your your debit card information they have access to your funds absolutely whereas if we're using a credit card they have access to the bank's funds and they're going to be a heck of a lot uh, more resilient going after that to make sure that those funds are, mm -hmm. you know, come back and they're going to remediate that very quickly, typically, but also you typically get better rewards on credit. So if you can utilize this, I mean, Absolutely. you're going to travel, you want to get cash back. I mean, there's a lot of things in a lot of ways that people use this. And if you can do it intelligently, I think, you know, using that credit card, but then knowing how much you're spending, paying it back, don't carry a balance per se, that's going to be the way to use it. Absolutely. I mean, and to your point, credit can be your friend or your greatest enemy. So if you go to nerdwallet.com, look at their credit cards, they'll give you a really good idea of the top cards for 2023. And if you're paying your cards off and yet you're getting cash back or your, you know, your travel cards that are going to do that kind of thing, points, um, and if you're getting a new card, you can start off with, you know, pretty good incentive. Like maybe Chase Sapphire card's going to give you 60,000 points up front, or you're going to get a 300 bucks up front. Yeah. So listen, you can use these credit cards to your advantage. And that's the one thing about helping Gen Z understand that, that purpose. But it does seem, again, just the fact that they have budgeting in their mix is so important. How many people do not like to have a budget and a plain old paper budget? And I just see Gen Z sometimes they'll come in here or I'll talk to them and they have a little notebook and they, they I'm like, what are you doing with the notebook? That they, they're actually keeping track of their budget. And I cannot fault them for that. Yeah, no, that's great. That is, that is fantastic. Now, what about for somebody who has some, has a balance on a credit card? What would you recommend? Well, I mean, if they can make more than the minimum payment, because obviously if you make the minimum payment, depending on how much you have, you're, you're really losing money at that point, right? Yeah. And if you, ha if you are having a balance, you have to actually under look at yourself and go, why? Why do you have a balance on a card? Are you living above your means? Because if I have an outstanding balance, what is that saying about my way of managing expenses, right, Danny? Yeah. Maybe, listen, maybe there's an emergency that comes up, but then we even talk about you should have an emergency cushion, but say you don't. But, and when I hear people do have a, a balance on their credit card, I, I want to know the strategy they have for paying it back a lot sooner and why it's there. And the why I think is important. If you're one of those people that consistently has a balance, especially today with the... Forget credit card rates are, 
disgusting anyway. But today, even worse as the Fed raises rates, right? Yeah, but wouldn't, wouldn't you also go look or maybe encourage somebody to go acquire a new credit card, transfer the balance? It depends on how much of a hole they got into. Like yeah. if I have someone that's got like two grand on a card, well, no. one, then I know that I can help them. But if yeah. they've got massive amount of debt, say they've been out of work, mm-hmm. right? Then there are a few things you can do. I mean, one is like you said, can I play the balance transfer game for a while yeah. and get a lower rate? Yeah, I can go to a private bank if my credit's good. I can go to like a Discover Bank and I'm not gonna get, uh, I'm gonna get maybe a nine, 10% rate as opposed to 22. Um, or you're gonna get on that balance transfer, 0% for six months, a year, 24 months. As long as you're not gonna use the cards again and I see that yeah. a problem, right? That's so, yeah. the issue. Yeah, so, or I have some people that'll take out, they, they have gotten into a bind and they have a home, a home equity line of credit. I might get them to use it to pay the card off and then to get rid of the darn card, okay? We can't get into this situation again. The problem I have is I have people that come out of the hole that I've talked to and then they're you back in back the in, hole. Yeah. So there's a problem there. Um, yeah, but there are absolute ways that you can work it out. Hey, listen, you can call the credit card company. I worked with a local ra- uh, TV station not too long ago going through this process of calling the bank, the credit card issuer, and asking for a low rate. And I want to tell you, it wasn't easy, but I was on the other side of that phone coaching this woman that had a higher rate, been with the bank a long time, and they kept telling her, no, sorry, we don't negotiate with terrorists. I mean, people, customers. So, um, but after a while, she was politely persistent, politely continued on until she got the retention department. She got someone on the phone that did lower her rate, but it took a little bit of work, Danny. It wasn't just like, hey, can you lower my rate? And the the person on the end of the phone goes, yeah, sure, no problem. No, no, it's always no, no, no. And most people are gonna say, okay, sorry, no. So she was about ready to do that. I'm like, no, 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 keep going, polite, keep going. Well, you know, we've had a hard time and she, yeah. I mean, I give her a lot of credit and she finally did get a lower rate. It's always amazing to me that you can actually, you know, how, many, how much money is probably left on the table by people not doing that. Because it's uncomfortable. Think about it. It really is. I mean, I know I would have a hard time with that. Like once I hear, no, 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 I'm sorry. We don't do that for anybody. You're like, okay, but keep going. Well, you tell them you're going to cancel and then be like, they say, all right, fine. Well, good riddance. Well, I even that's the way her, I look at it. They just make, it makes me mad. It does. I even had her say, you know, well, I can go to another card and do a balance transfer. Well, if that's what you'd like to do. But I really would like to keep this card. I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> but she did. So Gen Z, cash is king again. Yeah. For that generation. More power to you, Z. Triple Z. Z squareds. We'll be back. Investment Advice blog. It's required reading for the informed investor. Catch it today at realinvestmentadvice.com. Oh, Red, I declare. I plum miss that candy coffee. Whatever am I gonna do? Don't you worry, little darling. We'll watch it again on our YouTube channel. Why, Red? I never. The Real Investment Show YouTube channel has all of our past presentations from Candid Coffee and Lunch and Learn, the special topic discussions, and all of our live show recordings preserved for you. Subscribe now to the Real Investment Show YouTube channel or look for the link on our website at realinvestmentadvice.com. Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset 
your people. Realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement. Realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. In 1999, a parafiduciary group of financial advisors were busted by corporate giants for trying to operate in their clients' best interest. These men promptly escaped from a high-cost margin environment to the Houston Energy Corridor. Today, still excoriated by their former employers, they survive as protectors of others' fortunes. If you have a problem about preserving capital, if no one else can help, and you can find them right here, maybe you should hire the RIA team. Can't catch the whole show now? Listen to our podcast later at realinvestmentadvice.com. You pull something out of your refrigerator and it says the expiration date was like three weeks ago. Now, I know you've all done this. You eat it anyway. The Real Investment Show podcast. My daughter is a good example of this. If the milk is one day past the expiration date, she will not drink it. Same show, your schedule. Now, the expiration date's a safety mark. Give it the sniff test. You drink sour milk once. That is the only lesson you will ever need to learn in life. At realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. A passive investment portfolio requires active risk management. It's not a choice, it's necessity. Diversification doesn't protect against risk of loss. Let us actively help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Real Investment Show podcasts are now available from Stitcher Smart Radio at stitcher.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA Advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. It's a quick and easy application. Just simply click Ask a Question at realinvestmentadvice.com or give us a call at 855-RIA-PLAN. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show YouTube channel has all our videos ready for your easy access. Now with the new and improved Before the Bell Report, Candid Coffee, and Lunch and Learn Replays, plus each day's radio show. Subscribe and bookmark our YouTube channel or just click on the show links at realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. Hey, Dad, did you get a haircut? No, I got them all cut. Oh, come on. That was a good one. Come on. You know, I think your problem is, is your delivery. Oh, like, it we're is. expecting it. Yeah. Like, I, you just got to like sneak it in in the middle. You see, know, that's like, why you have to deliver the dad jokes. I'm a little rusty. The dogs don't appreciate them. So. And my daughter at 24 doesn't appreciate them either. So you're going to have to be the one who. Yeah, I, I got told a handful this weekend. Um, uh, any good ones? Try to remember to be honest with you. I'm I do like this one. How does a taco say grace? Let us pray. <laughs> it's like I don't know who dad would. If my kids give me that joke, they're gone. <laughs> that got him though. That got Brent. That got him. The lettuce joke got him. It was better. We're, we're, we're moving in the right direction. We're moving You're in the right up. direction. I'm on a site that has 148 of them, so I could just do that for the rest of the show if you prefer. Uh, may have to next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so next week we're going to be, we'll be on for a couple of hours. Two hours of this stuff. Two week. hours of yeah. this torture, torture, I mean fun. Um, but in the second hour, we're going to go back to taking phone calls. Uh -huh. Lance is going to take calls. We got. We have the old call manager system. Lance is cussing you right now. <laughs> well, He's yeah. like, "You got to be kidding me!" <laughs> well, you know, sometimes he can be cranky, so it's going to be interesting to hear these kinds of how he answers these questions. <laughs> I'm offering no guarantees for the second hour of the show yeah, next week. I, I, I wouldn't. Ooh, no. But I, it will be fun. It, well, it'll be like when you're in Star Trek and you're going off into a new nebulous <laughs> and you have no idea what kind of enemies you're going to. Uh, yeah. yeah, new episodes. There's Brent. Lance is answering a question. Phasers up. 
Hey, Rich, have you heard about the vampire dad jokes, though? No. They don't they suck. suck. Yeah. Come on, that one. That's how you do it. Yeah. Hey, that was you really good... uh, talk, sunk your teeth into that one, didn't you? I had to. Yeah. He's very smooth. So this is an interesting study. Center for Retirement Research, who I follow at Boston College, they said that a majority of U.S. households have a good sense of whether they are on track for retirement, right? So, but people are either too worried or not worried enough about future financial security. I think a lot of people sometimes don't want to do financial plans, Danny, is because they're worried <laughs> about what it's going to fo- uncover. Like we don't, we haven't saved enough. We need to change some habits. Listen, a plan is like a blood test. I mean, it shows everything. It's a financial blood test. It does. And um, so when they did this study, what they found, and I think they found interesting is high income households are most likely not to be worried enough, the research says. So I guess they feel like, hey, we have a lot of income, but we're not translating it into savings, Right. Um, and then you have groups that are obviously saving too little and they don't even recognize they're in trouble until they're prodded to do so because some people are resigned to the fact that, Hey, what's retirement? I'm never going to be able to retire. Why do I even bother? Need to, what do I need to run the numbers for? Right? Well, things will always get better or they, yeah. they have things they want to accomplish now. And they say, look, I'll, I'll save for it later. Right. I'll worry about it at a later date. And unfortunately we visit with a lot of people who make a ton of money, yet they don't have the money set aside to continue that lifestyle when they go to retirement. And so they see a significant change once you actually get there. Yeah, they they have to realize, I mean, about half of working age households will not be able to maintain their pre-retirement living standard. So that change to living standard based on how much you're saving and how much time you have left is a tough realization for many to think about i'm going to go from having all these trips and living extravagantly to maybe living a lot simpler because i just don't have the bandwidth um you know that's tough but then i have some people danny that embrace it they go you know what i'm going into this with gusto it's no retirement's perfect i'm going to scale it down i understand i made some mistakes but i don't need much and, you know, some people just face that realization with, with strong intent to change things and do the best they can. And that's really all you can do. But denial is not a good strategy. But it's a strategy many people use. And, you know, I visit with I, people who yeah, say, listen, true. I don't want a financial plan. And, <laughs> okay, let's talk about it. And what it boils down to more often than not, it's like, I don't want you to tell me how much money I can spend. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Look, we're advisors. We're counselors. We're How giving dare you, you. Yeah, we're giving you direction. You're going to do what you want to do. This is, these are your funds. Mm-hmm. But what they don't want is somebody tell them something different than what they're doing. It's like people who don't want to go to the doctor. Yeah. Because they don't want to know if there's anything wrong. Like, we're not going, I'm not going for a physical. I mean, I don't we're understand. talking about your life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do you not want to know? Because maybe it's something you can take care of. And for the most part, when you run a plan and you're working with an advisor that can really step into your shoes, they will help you come up with a strategy. No one is going to hear to chastise you. Everybody's life has gotten in the way of things. And sometimes you just need to make some minor tweaks to get to where you need to be. Obviously, you're not going to need as much income. You're not going to be saving, but you do have to maybe... Be worried a little. Matter of fact, the people that save the most and the people who are in best shape that I work with, and it's probably true for you too, Danny, are the ones who are worried. A little worry is good. A little bit of that dissonance and concern keeps you sharp. Am I doing the right things? I don't feel like I have enough money. And those are the people that tell me, as soon as somebody says to me, I just don't think I have enough money. I already know (laughs) they have enough money (laughs) to retire because they are concerned about it. They're aware of it as opposed to just closing their eyes to it. So 
these assessments that are made and the, the study from the Center for Retirement Research shows that, you know, overall, a little bit of worry is good and a little bit of attention is good overall because that retirement lifestyle, especially as people live longer. Hey, listen, Danny, I was just telling Brent, Home Depot has a tiny house for $44,000. Right? It's a 540 square foot home, enough space for a living room, kitchen, full bath, rooftop deck accessible by a spiral staircase. Listen, that's just the framing, but the, the more, there are more people that are actually dealing with reality and saying, you know what, I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to look at more of a tiny home situation. And I'm seeing a lot of them coming up in Washington County. I spent some time there last week, and I was surprised by the number of small homes going up on respectable size, small lots, but respectable size lots, fairly decent yards for under $100,000. I mean, there are people that are finding ways to deal with the fact that they may not have saved enough. And just that retirement is... because. I'm just, I might live a long time. I need my money to go a long way. So I always thought tiny homes would be popular. Um, but just, now just not for the reasons that you really thought they would be popular. <laughs> it's a necessity, not a want. Like you want to live in a tiny no, home I, in the middle of nowhere. I do, People but I have to live in a tiny no, home. No, but I wrote in a book that I think it was going to be a necessity. Yeah, I think that yeah. retirees were going to have to create actual communities and live and have maybe communal kitchens. I mean, I just think there are going to be a lot of single people in retirement and they're going to have to have this more of a community effort, smaller places to live. And we're seeing those, those kinds of communities popping up all over the country. Listen, we know owning a house, even if it's a reasonable sized house with the taxes and so forth, it, it's becoming unaffordable. Look what happened with the insurance. Homeowners insurance is up double digits. And, no, and, and those kinds of costs do not go backwards, okay? They don't. Right, Brent? I was talking to a friend yesterday, and she told me, if you're not reviewing your homeowner's insurance policy every year, mm -hmm. you're getting screwed. Yeah, if you're not reviewing any of these policies every exactly. year. You, you've got to shop that stuff. They just want to set it and forget it, and you call your insurance agent. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, we looked. Really? But okay, what did you shop board, Why didn't you and call that, and tell me? Right, and that is smart, but across the board... Homeowners insurance, oh yeah, is higher because of all the losses that we've had nationwide mm -hmm. over the past five years at minimum, and they're going to continue to go up as these natural disasters continue to occur. Yeah, a recent report from the RV Industry Association found mobile home demand is surging. I mean, people are trying to find ways to take on shelter. At a lower cost. Yeah. And I could not believe what I saw in Washington County as far as the number of small homes and people, uh, companies that are, or, or independent investors building these smaller homes. I just think that's, that's what a lot of people are going to have to do. It is what it is. So do your financial plan, understand the reality. Your financial advisor is not going to bite your head off. They are there to help you and partner with you and help you make good decisions. We'll be right back. Investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. Oh, Red, I declare. I plum missed that candy coffee. Whatever am I gonna do? Don't you worry, little darling. We'll watch it again on our YouTube channel. Why, Red? I never. 
The Real Investment Show YouTube channel has all of our past presentations from Candid Coffee and Lunch and Learn to special topic discussions and all of our live show recordings preserved for you. Subscribe now to The Real Investment Show YouTube channel or look for the link on our website at realinvestmentadvice.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA Advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. Get started right now at the website, realinvestmentadvice.com, or simply call our toll-free number, 855-RIA-PLAN at realinvestmentadvice.com. Small businesses are now being challenged by the lack of employees and how to attract and recruit the best employees. To get the better employee, you'll have to offer a better package. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, RIA Advisors Retirement Plan Consultant. Don't assume a 401k plan is too costly or complicated for your small business to offer. Let us show you how to make the most of an affordable and effective plan that will deliver true value for your business and your employees. Call me toll free at 855-RIA-PLAN or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. And now another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Manage risk and volatility rather than trying to manage gains. You don't have to be right all the time. Long-term investing success is a 70% gain. Let us help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors. 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. We're back. Boomers and grandparents have taken TikTok by storm. Wow. We don't need to do that. We, we don't need to do that. It makes no sense. I don't want to see some old dude dancing on TikTok. I could watch Brent do it right here in the studio. <laughs> yeah, you got to catch me first. And then I really might put that on TikTok. <laughs> I don't understand the problem with this. A bride-to-be is asking if she and her fiancé are wrong for wanting their dog and cat to be in wedding party roles traditionally taken by children. I prefer it. I've seen it done. I would have a dog yeah. ring, a ring dog versus a... It's cool. Yeah. It is. What's wrong with that? Yeah. I mean, she doesn't want her kids to be there. She wants her dog and cat. Again, I'm not having a problem with this. It's terrible for Father's Day. <laughs> terrible. Can you give Danny have the dogs walk down the aisle instead of the kids? Not a bad idea. Yeah. I think you can control the dogs better. Mm. I was a ring bearer for my cousin's wedding, and all I do is walk down the aisle, and I was smacking him. Hey, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> At what age? I don't know, like eight or nine years old. <laughs> but like, this kid's taking over the wedding. Like, get him out of here. Yeah. Then I didn't want to give the rings up. I can sell those. Well, how long were they married? Maybe it, was, maybe it wasn't a bad idea. Not long. <laughs> yeah. I probably should have kept them. Yeah. Well, the worst thing is when I said, can I do this at your next wedding? Never got invited back. That's Richard. Yep. Always planning ahead. Yep. Even at nine and ten years old. This kid's a punk. <laughs> All right, so... Insurance, we were just talking about it. And as Brent talked about reviewing your coverage, you really do want to look at your PNC insurance coverage every year, right? It's, it's slow during the summer. It's time to dig into insurance coverage. So if you look at, say, for example, Texas law, it requires you to have $30,000 of coverage for injuries per person, up to a total of 60000 per accident, 25000 of coverage for property damage. This is called 30 60 25. And that's minimum coverage, but often not sufficient because you have to customize or should look to customize your policy to your state's driving DNA, which in Houston is Mad Max. The age of your automobile, the frequency of your driving, where you're driving, right? So like in Houston, for example, most likely you're going to have underinsured or, or uninsured Motorist coverage, again, I want to bolster that. Yeah. So you can't just go for the minimum 
in some cases that the state designates, you might have to craft or customize your coverage. What do you say, Danny? Yeah, I think it's very important to, to number one, shop, to number two, be you know overinsured in some cases, especially depending on the I area that you live, you. what yeah. you have going on. Um, I know you're a big fan of risk mitigation. I am. Um, I am as well. I, I think that you know there's some things that we cannot control, and I get it. People don't like to pay for something that you may not use, but unfortunately, mm-hmm. that's just the way insurance works. Right. But being properly insured, uh, especially in a litigious society, you know, I, I think we're going you know even further than your auto and your home. But looking at the umbrella looking at other ways to protect assets. That is extremely important. And we find so often, you know, more often than not, people just don't have it all together, right? And then you try to shop and go to one place or another or another. And the issue is that more, you're more likely to get a better deal by bundling and having things in one spot. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially once you do an umbrella policy, which likely they're gonna wanna see all those coverages of what you have, um, you know, what's your deductible, what are your uh, limits on your auto coverage. Because you might want an umbrella coverage, right, Danny? Because yeah. it's gonna go beyond the financial limits of an existing auto or home insurance policy. So these are, I mean, they've gone up, but umbrella policies are pretty inexpensive and add maybe $1 million to $5 million worth of additional liability coverage. So um, it's important, I agree with Danny, risk mitigation, and when we find people who investigate insurance, They're looking at cost only. They're not looking at maybe the dependability of the the insurer, ease of claim, right? They're not looking at, they're looking at just the bare minimum when you have to really examine and put yourself in the place that where do I drive? Listen, if you drive, if you're driving in a country area, a suburban area, and you're not going very far, and yeah, I understand. But you got to look at your driving habits and, and make the right decision. And I don't think a lot of people really understand that an umbrella coverage is really, if you have high net worth, you want extra cover for, uh, coverage for property damage and liabilities and possible lawsuits that can result from various types of accidents, that in this litigious society, as Danny said, having an umbrella policy is a smart idea. So this is a time of year where things are slowing down. It's going to be, what, 300 degrees in the heat this weekend mm-hmm. or something like that? 111 heat Hun- index here. 111. Stay in the house and look at your insurance policies. Gosh, I'm exciting lately. All right. Brent, I'm a real catch. So, um, I mean, you do have to do it. I know it's not fun, but in the lazy, hazy days of summer, Think about these kinds of things. And like Brent said, you do have to shop around and you should be aware. That's like when we tell people with Medicare during open enrollment, you want to check your your Part D coverage. And it's not just your prescription drugs. It's not all the cost. There are other factors that go into that. But many people, especially on the Medicare side, are going to overpay for prescription drug coverage because they don't examine it every year. It's the same thing for property and casualty insurance. Heck, we try to save money on so many things, but we I find, Danny, a lot of people cut corners on insurance. Life insurance when you have children and you don't have it, I think that's, I can't even fathom that. That's crazy. I mean, it breaks my heart when I go on and I see someone like on, on Facebook having a GoFundMe, like this young couple lost their father in an accident, some hiking accident. And I'm like, you know, he, and she puts in there, he didn't have any life insurance and he's got two young children. I'm like, I just, you know, maybe it's the planner in me, but I I just can't even, that can't even cross my mind that I would not have life insurance. Um, Yeah. But again, like you, I'm maybe a little bit insurance of an insurance zealot, so I'm always looking at that. But heck, you know, you got to think about the other lives you're affecting, and you're especially yourself if there is a liability issue. Well, I mean, what, what happens if something happens to you? I mean, what type of lifestyle do you want your your spouse to have, your kids to have? Are you going right. to pay for college? You know, how long do you need something? So I always like term to mitigate any of that type of risk, and then a permanent policy either for you know potential income use further down the line. 
from a tax-free perspective or for estate planning purposes. But mitigating risk, ideally, you need that while you still have children. Mm-hmm. And then at some point, you know, I do see a lot of people who are, who are much older that still have term. Yeah, but and they're going like, many well, times my kids don't need you're it. You're self-insured, right? Right, right. Now, I do have some, it's interesting, I do have some older clients that have smaller term policies. And mm-hmm. they're like, you know, my kids are fine, but I don't know. It's if not I much leave them a little paying, bit of money, yeah. what's wrong with that? You know, yeah. but it's a philosophy. But to your point, the need for life insurance is just not going to be there. Yeah. Uh, overall. But a young family with children, I don't know. Things change. I, I see that you have to. One of the first things I did was make sure I had enough life insurance when my daughter was born. And I think that's really important. But again, you will have insurance policies of, of different types throughout your life, and they deserve investigation. Heck, even in some form, insurance is going to be a good way for you to create a paycheck in retirement. The, more, the longer people live, it's not just maximizing Social Security. You might need to create your own pension through some form of single premium immediate annuity or deferred annuity that supplements paycheck for life. Because variable assets are just that. They go up and down. But if I have longevity in my family and I don't want that variability, I might bolster my secure income flow. Especially, Danny, if I go through times where the markets are not giving me return and I might have to adjust my spending and I don't want to do that. So... Wouldn't it be nice if I not only do smart things with Social Security, that I also might have a supplemental policy that provides a pension, which most companies don't do anymore, and I craft it on my own? But we always find that people are sold annuities. Like I had someone the other day call me. She goes, you know, my parents tell me that she's 30 years old. My parents tell me I need an annuity because their pa- her parents are 70. I'm like, well, I don't know if you need an annuity. She's pressing me for an answer, and I'm like, I can't. I have no idea. Annuities are designed to give you a check for life, and I don't know your numbers to say that you're not saving enough for you to even need an annuity. So being crafted an annuity and being sold an annuity are two different things. We work with a lot of clients who do not need annuities. They, They can, with Social Security and their variable assets, stocks and bonds, and their lifestyle, they're able to do the right thing. And, and, they're, and they, they don't have that longevity risk. They might need long-term care coverage. So take a look at your policies. Don't be complacent about them. Make sure, first of all, you have enough coverage for whatever policy you have. And then, to Brent's point, you better shop around. Uh, 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 uh. Better shop around. You got a great weekend. Well, you don't want to shop around on Father's Day weekend. That's not fun. I'm sorry, children. We cannot go out for Father's Day dinner because I am shopping my auto insurance. No, we don't want to do that. Only Danny would do that. But nobody else is going to do that. Hey, next week, we're going to be taking phone calls for the second hour of the show. We're going to be on for a couple of hours. Next week, be nice on your questions or we'll hang up on you. Have a great weekend.